Приветствую вас, братья и сестры. Мое слово сегодня будет на английском языке. Но, пожалуйста, если у вас есть ваши Библии, пожалуйста, откройте второе Паралипоминон. Вторая книга Паралипоминон, 26 глава. That's Second Chronicles, chapter 26. And while, you, while everybody here is opening up their Bibles, I would like to talk to, about a king. This wasn't any random king. This was one of the kings of Judah. This was actually the 10th king of Judah. This was the king of Judah who sought the Lord, and then he became strong, and then he fell into sin. And his sin that he fell into was devastating. So please, chapter 26 of the book of 2 Chronicles, we'll read verse 16, and then we'll go through the entire chapter. That's verse 16. And verse 16 goes like this. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. I want to repeat that again. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. And we'll talk about exactly what happened with Uzziah. Why did his heart, or what may have been the reasons to why Uzziah had his heart lifted? And I want to look at that. Let's just go ahead and just go through the entire chapter of 2 Chronicles chapter 26. 2 Chronicles chapter 26 says that Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king. And in verse 5, and actually let's look at verse 4, it says, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. And verse 5, it says something else. And he sought the Lord in the days of Zechariah. And that's a really important point here. Uzziah sought the Lord. Uzziah wasn't just some king who went with the motions. Uzziah didn't just say, well, whatever happens, happens. Uzziah actively sought out God in his life. He didn't think that it was just something that happened by chance, by circumstance. Unfortunately, many Christians today they believe that I can just be a Christian by circumstance. Just because my family goes to church or my friends go to church, it's just convenient friendships and I'll somehow maybe become a Christian and maybe somehow I'll also make it into heaven. Absolutely not. We look at the example of Uzziah. He was a good example in this specific area. He sought the Lord. May we, too, seek the Lord. Let's go more about Uzziah. Uzziah was a man who had many different successes. One of the successes that we're going to read about right now is his success on the battlefield. He was a successful general. And we read in verse 6, that's 2 Chronicles 26, 6, it says, And he went forth and warred against the Philistines and break down the wall of Gath. And in verse 7, it says, God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians. Again, it says, God helped him. And we can actually refer back to verse 5. It says, and as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. And that's a really important distinction. Uzziah sought the Lord, and God made him prosper. It's God who brought him success. Not Uzziah's own might, or his own intellect, his own wit, his own courage. Absolutely not. It was God who gave him the strength, the wisdom, the power, and everything he needed to prosper. We can read even more. In verse 8 it says, The Ammonites gave gift to Uzziah, and his name spread abroad, even entering in Egypt, for he strengthened himself exceedingly. Now we have to remember that the kingdom of Judah was not this vast empire at this time. It wasn't as big as the United States. Everybody knows the president of the United States in the world. You ask anybody in Europe and any continent, they'll tell you exactly who the president of the United States is. But the question is, imagine us living here in America and we know who the president of Mexico is or any other, other, other nations around the world. I doubt that we know many of them. But Uzziah was so powerful, so successful, that imagine someone living in America would know his name. Someone living in a prosperous nation like Egypt knew his name. They knew who this, this king Uzziah was. We further read about Uzziah and his financial success, and this is also a really important distinction. Uh, we read 
in verse 9, it says, Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem and on the corner gate and at the valley gate and the turning of the wall and fortified them. He also built towers in the desert and digged many wells, for he had much cattle, both in the low country and in the plains, husbandmen also, and vine dressers in the mountains, and in Carmel, for he loved husbandry. Why is this an important point? Why is this in here? This verse is in here to show that his, he had financial backing. Uzziah wasn't just someone who was barely making it by. He wasn't a poor king by any measure. He was very successful financially. And his financial success allowed him to build towers, allowed him to fortify the holy city of Jerusalem. It allowed him to expand his wealth greatly. We can see actually in verse 11, it says, Moreover, Uzziah had a host of fighting men. And in this chapter, it says that there were 307,500 fighting men. Those fighting men needed to get their equipment somewhere. They needed to get training somehow. And Uzziah's financial and military success allowed him to have 307,500 fighting men who were well equipped. And another interesting distinction that Uzziah had was he was one of the first kings, or actually the first king that we read in the Bible, who put siege engines on top of towers. And that was a great accomplishment at the time. We can actually read again in verse 15, it says, and his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. And that's where the story takes a dark turn. That's where you might look at Uzziah and say, Uzziah, you have everything. You have a kingdom, you have military success, you have financial success, you are seeking out the Lord, the people of your nation love you, you are, in essence, an amazingly perfect king. There is nothing that you can do to ruin this, if you really think about it. You have everything is going your way. Unfortunately, the success that Uzziah experienced brought him to a sin. And we can call that sin pride. Again, verse 16. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. For those of us who read our Bibles and are familiar with what goes on in the temple, we understand that random people can't go inside the temple and burn incense. That's not something that was permissible, especially for someone like Uzziah, even though he had a great lineage that he can claim and say, look, I am from the lineage of David. I'm, I think I'm pretty worthy. But unfortunately, this was something that was reserved only for the Levites, only for the children of Aaron. And again, he thought that his success as a king made him worthy to go and do these things. And that's a really interesting point because many times in the Bible, for example, Isaiah 2.12, it says, the Lord Almighty has a day in store for all the proud and lofty. Again, that's Isaiah 2.12. He has a day in store. And unfortunately, if we turn the page and read further on, it says that Uzziah was covered by leprosy. Right as he was holding that burning that incense, the priest said, it is not right for you to do that. And he became angry and he became violent. And he said, no, I'm going to do this. And as he did that, the Lord struck him. And he struck him mightily. And unfortunately, Uzziah had to live the rest of his days separate from Jerusalem. He had to live in a separate house and he had to have someone else sit on his throne and govern for him. What's the story here? What's the lesson here? Why am I reading from 2 Chronicles? The lesson is this. Many of us, or actually all of us, for the most part, we immigrated to this country. Or we were born into families of immigrants. And many of us have parents or grandparents or even ourselves, we can tell stories about how we came to America with nothing, with a couple hundred dollars of that and maybe one or two suitcases. And we started from scratch. And as the years progress, just like Uzziah, we have multiplied, we have grown our wealth, we have grown businesses, we have grown our careers, we have had many children, many of us 
see the success of our child raising, of our child rearing, and we see our grandchildren, we see children getting married, and so on, and having their own families, and we might like to look at that and say, wow, I did that, that was me, I, it was because of me. We built this great church, and we have many different ministries, and sometimes we might allow, like to think that, well, this ministry is successful because of what I do, because of my hard work, about, because of my long hours that I have put in. I think I I am able, I am worthy enough to write this to me. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Unfortunately, that is pride. And the Bible is very clear about that. In James, if you open up the book of James, chapter 4, it says the following, verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. We are going to pray right now. What are we going to pray about? I want us, during prayer, when we get on our knees, I want us to look and dig deep inside and ask ourselves the question, Lord, am I putting something to my name that doesn't belong to me? Am I allowing pride to motivate me to serve you? Is my desire for recognition or my desire for fame or my desire for some kind of other worldly success the reason why I worship you? Or am I living truly a humble and meek life? May God help us to hear his voice, to know when we are walking astray, lest we be punished like Uzziah. Uzziah's punishment was terrible. And we know today, actually in James 4, 6, it says, but he gives us more grace. That is why the scripture says God opposes the proud and sows favor with the humble. May we be those who are humble, who receive God's favor in our lives. But that requires us to bow down on our knees and request for the Lord to show us, to humble us and and repent if we do show pride. Let us pray. Amen.